And here we are again. Thanks for coming out. The content objectives today are what caused the population explosion to happen. Uh, we're going to take a look at a demographic transition model, and that'll allow us to just see how population growth rates change as a society develops. And then finally, we'll be calculating some population growth rates and doubling times as well. Before we jump off this slide, just take a, a look at those pictures there. I, you know, I think most of us in the Bay Area are, are pretty far removed from true population density. Uh, if you've been to Chinatown in San Francisco, that's a very dense population center. And not to say that there's not a lot of people in the Bay Area and we get caught in traffic and we, we definitely have that going on. But just take a look at these in this marketplace in the develop, developing world or, or this mode of transport in Africa where you've got, you know, just a a lot of people vying for not so many resources. Um, and so population uh, density is a real issue and we're going to get into it right now. Um, and so the first thing we're going to look at is, is this graph, which I think most of us recognize. you got that classic J curve showing exponential growth of the human population. And just notice that back here about two and a half million years ago, this is when we're all hunter-gatherers and very nomadic, moving around. Um, and not really having cities and things like that. And the birth rates equal the death rates, more or less. And so the population growth really doesn't change. And even here, when the last several thousand years, when we get into uh, agriculture, is still remaining pretty flat here until we get to about a couple hundred years ago. And then it's just like takeoff time. And so what happened there? That's what we're going to look at first. That's our first essential question. And so uh, the thing we need to remember about uh, those times, you know, a few hundred years ago and thousands of years ago, is it wasn't like it is today. Most of us would have been on the farm. Today, it's something like three people are farmers for every hundred people. Back then, it was 97 farmers for every hundred people. And so most of us would be on the farm. And when you're on the farm, you need labor. And so there's really that incentive to have a big family because if you have lots of kids, you have lots of hands to do the farm work. And so here's a family on a, on a farm uh, in the United States. And uh, it's not my grandfather's family, but my grandfather's a perfect example. He arrived in Nebraska in a covered wagon as a baby, literally a covered wagon. And he was one of 11 kids and they all worked the farm. And that's just how, and that was normal. Um, and then the other thing, and this is still true in lots of parts of the world, is like when you have an agrarian society, uh, you know, maybe you don't have social security and pension plans set up. And so all, having lots of kids is a form of social security. And so when you get older, the idea is the kids take care of you. Um, and so that's how it was. And then the other thing to know about these farms is that this is before fossil fuels, this is before fertilizers. And so the, the work, you know, it was, I imagine it was uh, a tremendous amount of work to uh, just to survive. Uh, the other thing happening at that time is you've got a higher infant mortality rate and there's a, you know, you've got more diseases that were less understood. And so the, the chances of kids dying and things like that were very real and infants dying. And so that was just another reason to have more kids. Okay, and so uh, the other thing that happened right, and here I got another slide here, same thing where you've got that, that domestic, uh, domestication, farming starts, here's all of a sudden you've got cities starting to form, and then right around here is the beginning of the launch, but let's just take a look at this little dip right there. That dip, and I think it's labeled on this other graph, is the Black Death, the plague, bubonic plague. And so if you can imagine what medieval London or Middle e medieval Europe looked like at that time. Well, let's just talk about London. You've got, you know, people are starting to come to the cities. You know, people are, are moving in and it's not like it was to, today, but you've got, you know, hundreds of thousands of people living in one spot and it must have been completely disgusting. No sewage, no refrigeration, people slaughtering animals in the street, people, you know, defecating everywhere. You're walking around the street in filth. Uh, and then, as I'm sure many know, uh, the bubonic plague is a bacteria that at the time they didn't even know what bacteria was, but this bacteria traveled in fleas that rode on the back of rats, so rats everywhere, fleas jumping off rats, fighting people, people getting really, really sick. And uh, some of the folklore around what happened at that time is pretty interesting. So, uh, you know, they were burning bodies. They had no idea why the, why the spirits were, were angry and killing people. And so they burned the bodies. Ashes, ashes, they all fall down. Comes from that time. Uh, ring around the rosy, pocket full of posies. They'd keep things in their pockets to ward off the evil spirits. Um, they would bathe in urine, rub excrement on themselves, and just all kinds of wacky stuff. But they, they just 
They didn't know what was killing them um, until, uh, and this is our next point here, uh, with the Industrial Revolution, uh, one thing that happened was they discovered bacteria, just microorganisms. And so if you've heard of Louis Pasteur, he was the one that uh, recognized that molds uh, ward off bacteria and he developed you know, penicillin. And so he developed some of the first antibiotics. And just recognizing that there's these microorganisms was a major breakthrough. And so uh, following that was not only more medicine, but just increased sanitation. And so how do we kind of keep ourselves away from these, uh, you know, these germs? And so that helped out a lot. And at the same time, you've got uh, the Industrial Revolution happening where you've got uh, people dis discovering we can use coal and other types of oil as fuel. And so before that, it was like wind and animals and, you know, people power. And now we're starting to get more intense with our fuels and that allowed us to grow more food. Still no fertilizers, but we've been, we're able to ramp up the food production, which allowed people to move into the cities and, and do other things. And so those things um, combined were two major things that caused this thing to launch right here. Um, and then, you know, the, the question that we had uh, back when we first started the course with uh, Jared Diamond is his article about was agriculture the worst mi mistake in human history? And maybe it's beyond, you know, talking about since it's already done. But one thing we can say is with increased agriculture, it allowed us to live in certain, you know, in, in societies and not move around. And more food uh, allowed us, the, the human population, to grow quite a bit. And we've got a lot of environmental problems associated with that. And so uh, what we're going to do right now, oh, and one last point on this, uh, and so just, just so you know that that bubonic plague, just to put a time thing on it, that was uh, 14th century, killed about half of Europe, so millions and millions of people went down from that. Uh, and then this part right here where the Industrial Revolution take off, took off, this is like between 17th and 19th century, so last couple hundred years. But now we've got this, you know, the population is skyrocketing. One other point along with this is that uh, infant mortality has gone way down, and so with all the increased medical care, uh, we've got a lot better prenatal care, taking care of mothers and, and things like that. And so there's way, you know, back in the day, it was pretty risky business giving birth. There were, there were no epidurals. Uh, you know, there's a, a likelihood that the, the mother's going to die delivering the baby or the baby's going to die. And so now what we've got are a lot more kids living and not dying. And so uh, the death rate has gone down and, and, and birth rates maybe not so much. And so we're going to talk about that more here in a second, but we're going to cut it off for right now. Please come back in just a nanosecond and we're going to hit part two of this little lecture, lecture series. So we'll uh, see you in a second.